So there's a really cool thought experiment which helps you understand what you think is a probability. So the thought experiment is called Sleeping Beauty Problem and Sleeping Beauty goes to an experiment and in this experiment she will be put to sleep. She comes into the laboratory at mm, Sunday and on Wednesday she will be woken up. So there's Monday and Tuesday in between. Now the experimenter will flip a coin and if the coin comes up heads, the experimenter will wake up Sleepy Beauty, Sleeping Beauty on Monday. And if the coin comes up tails, the experimenter will wake Sleepy Beauty on Monday and Tuesday. And the idea is that Sleeping Beauty goes to sleep on Sunday and is woken up on Monday and maybe on Tuesday. And um, after that, she will be put back to sleep with a drug that makes her forget everything that she knows. And also, when she wakes up, she does not know whether it's Monday or Tuesday. And she also doesn't know what the coin uh, came up. So basically, she will wake up, maybe once, maybe twice. She doesn't know whether she's been woken up again uh, before that or whether she will be woken up again. So basically, she will just wake up, disoriented, and she will be asked a question. And the question is, what credence do you give to the statement that the coin came up heads and you can also phrase this in a probability way what is the probability that sleeping beauty should believe that the coin came up heads um, and there are two obvious answers to this some say it's clearly one half because if you flip a coin it comes up with a 50 percent probability heads and that's just the answer. If Sleeping Beauty wakes up on Monday or on Tuesday, she does not learn anything about the coin flip. So it's still one half and it's just 50-50, whether the coin is heads or tails. That's the half us position. Um, so, I, so this is a very established philosophical problem. And there's this one side of the discussion who say clearly it's one half. And then there's this other side, the third position who claims the probability of heads is one third, 33%. Because, well, Sleeping Beauty could be in one of three positions. It could be Monday and the coin came up heads. It could be Monday and the coin came up tails. And it could be Tuesday and the coin came up tails. And out of three possibilities, which are all equally likely because Sleeping Beauty has no reason to believe that one is more likely than the other, out of these three, only one probability, the Monday heads, is, uh, uh, is a situation where the coin came up heads. So there's a, only a one-third probability that the coin came up heads. And now I think there are two interesting counter-arguments to both positions. Um, and I will go through them and then we might understand what you really think is a probability depending on which of the sides you take. So if you say, I think the probability is one half that the coin came up heads, um, the counter argument would be if you repeat this experiment and if you gamble on the coin coming up heads and you do this experiment a hundred times, you will lose in two thirds of the cases where you bet on heads or, um, or, or framed otherwise, you will win in only one third of the, the experiments. Because each time you go into experiment, the experiment, say you go into the experiment 100 times, in expectation 50 of the 100 times will come up heads. In these 50 trials where the coin came up heads, you will win. And then the other 50, the coin comes up tails. And in these 50 experiments, you will be woken up Monday and Tuesday. So it will be 50 plus 50, 100 trials where you lose. So you have 50 where you won, 50 and 50, so 100 where you lost, so one third where you lost. And usually a probability is defined the way that if you believe in the statement and you repeat the experiment infinitely times, infinitely many times, um, the probability is the probability, the, the frequency, the relative frequency of you succeeding. Um, so it should be one third. So let's check the counter-argument against the third opposition. So if you believe that the probability is one third, that the coin comes up heads, um, 
the following problem is here. On Sunday, before the coin is flipped, you should believe that the coin comes up heads with 50% probability, right? Because it's a fair coin, you just flip it, it's uh, nothing interesting. Um, and then when you're woken up, you suddenly have changed your um, probability uh, assignment, right? You then suddenly came to one third. So how does this happen? Or put other way, um, the argument is called the reflection principle. If you are on sun, uh, if it's still Sunday, and you reflect that tomorrow you will be woken up, it might be Monday, or you could also be woken up on Tuesday. So at some point you will be woken up in the next experiment in the coming days, and then you will have changed your probability assignment to one third. You definitely will be woken up. You definitely will come to the conclusion that then it's one third. Why should you not believe now that it is one third? Because obviously, if you are certain that something um, that in the future you will change your mind, if it's undoubtedly so that you will change your mind in the future, you should already now believe in this fact. For example, if I am 100% certain that tomorrow I will get test results for my school exam and I'm 100% certain I will fail, then actually I am. I have already now failed. I should believe that I have failed already now. I do not have to wait for tomorrow. I should already assign this probability, this knowledge now. Um, but now I think it's one half and when I'm woken up, which will 100% happen I, and 100% I will think it's one third then, uh, why should I not now believe it's one third? But this would actually be a contradiction to just a fair coin throw, right? Nobody would believe that a fair coin would be would come up one third heads. Um, so you have this uh, betting thing that speaks against the halfer position, the 50% assignment to the heads, and you have this self-reflection principle um, where you should anticipate what you believe and transfer it to now, which speaks against the one thirder position. And um, there's a nice interpretation of uh, Elgar in 2000, who, in my opinion, even though it did not change, it did not like um, settle the whole issue for uh, for the philosophical community. But in my opinion, this is the the most relevant argument here. So Elgar says, um, the information you get based on which the third position says you change your information. So you're woken up and just you suddenly say, now I believe it's one third. Um, this information is so-called self-localizing information. Um, and I would, I would frame it the following way. Um, you do not learn something about the world, but if you take this kind of information into account that you've now woken up, that there are three possibilities and two of them are tails and one are heads. If you take this information into, your, into account, you do not learn something about the world, but you do learn something about your position in the world, or you think about your position in the world. Um, and what this leads to is that if a lot of people do this experiment, you choose the optimal way to do the least mistakes. Because as I said, if you do this experiment a hundred times, you should bet on uh, tails and heads. heads comes only up in 33% of the cases. Um, so this information is kind of like a betting sort of information. Like I should use this as an individual to think about my position in the world. But it does not tell you anything about the true nature of the world. It only tells you something about how likely am I going to win this bet. Um, and it is certainly very helpful to think about such things. It's uh, um, individually assigned uh, information uh, individual assigned probability based on information of where I am in the world or the thought process is of where am I, is it a Monday or a Tuesday in the tail situation, um, but it does not tell you something about the original coin flip. The original coin flip, I would argue, is still uh, has still a probability of one half and I would go so far as to say that in science I do not care about the individually assigned probability based on information that is self-localizing. So if an experiment, if a scientist comes to me and says, I assigned the following probability to some hypothesis based on what I believe where I am in the world, I would say, I don't care about your self-localization 
your, your information that where you are in the world, I only care about the world. I want to have in objective information. And I know this sounds abstract. Let me make a um, more uh, concrete example. So imagine God created the universe and he had two options. Either he creates a universe with only us humans on planet Earth. We are the only conscious beings in the entire universe. Or he creates a universe where there are thousands thousands of uh, conscious beings uh, on, on many planets. Now, um, we come, I, I as a sentient being, as a human on planet Earth, now think about which hypothesis is more likely. Do I assign a 50-50 probability because I just do not know which is more likely? Say God flipped a coin, a perfect coin. Um, or do I assign a very high probability to the situation that there are many other sentient beings based on the idea that, well, either the universe has only one sentient um, race and that's on Earth and this is the human race, um, or there are thousands and I'm one of the thousand Therefore, the odds are 1,000 to 1 that there are more uh, sentient beings. Um, so the third position transferred to this university, uh, universe example um, would favor and say that the uh, multiple sentient being uh, universe is way more likely than the one sentient being. Um, and I would say, as a half a position here, um, it makes a lot of sense to take this position because if every race takes this bet, then you are probably on the good side. So a lot of races win the bet if you believe that there are many races with conscience, be a conscient, uh, conscience with, with conscience, um, because only one race would lose if this is not true, but. There are thousands of races who should bet on this because if this is the kind of universe we live in, then all of them would win, right? Um, so it makes a lot of sense to think about this in, in terms of self-localizing information, in terms of um, am I the only one or am I one of the thousands? But it does not tell us anything about God's original coin flip about the true nature of the world. And um, therefore, this thought experiment, whether you are half or third position, um, kind of tells you what you think should influence probabilities. Um, if you think your self-localizing information, your, your like chances of winning a betting game should influence or should be part of probabilities, I would say yes, but maybe not in science, um, or whether you should believe that they should not be taken into account um, at all or in certain situations. And uh, I think that's a very, very interesting thought experiment to kind of get an idea of where you are and what you really believe are probabilities. So see you next time.